welcome to J-Heart Model Works. We're getting started on the Tamiya 124 scale Alpine Renault A110. And that means we're going to prep and paint the body. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. We'll start by cutting off any parts that need to be body colored. There isn't very many. We have the engine cover, two rear vent covers, and the interior door panels. Once cut off, we'll clean up any sprue marks with our 400 grit thinny stick sanders. Next, using our Tammy engraving tool, we're going to rescribe the panel lines. There aren't many, and they're fairly deep already, so I'm just going to give them a few gentle passes. We want to take our time and be careful here. If we skip out of the lines, we'll put a scratch in the body that will mean extra work filling and sanding to fix it. With the panel lines done, we're going to move on to sanding down the mold lines, and I'm going to alternate between my 400 grit thinny stick and my thinny sponge sanders. I put some Tamiya tape down because I thought there was trim detail here. Turns out the trim isn't molded on the front fenders like it should have been. Like I said, we're going to alternate between the 400 grit thinny stick and the sponge sander. There's a lot of curvature to this body, and we want to be careful not to sand any flat spots into these curves. I do want to make a note, to keep the videos fairly short, all the footage in this video is sped up to at least double speed, so it may look like I'm flying through things. I'm not. Take your time and don't rush anything. Now as I mentioned earlier, the side trim is missing from the front fenders right behind the wheels. We're going to add it back using some plastic rod. We're going to cut a small section off, we're going to rub it against our sander to thin it down a little bit as this is a little too thick and we're going to shape the point at the front. We then want to rub it flat on the sander to create a flat surface on one side. We're going to apply some Tamiya Extra Thin to the trim piece along that flat surface and we're going to carefully set it into place on the body and line it up with some tweezers. Try not to move it around any more than you need to as this is hot cement on the body. Once the glue sets, we need to come back and sand the area to clean up any mess that may have been made on the body from the cement. With that done, we're going to drill a 0.5 millimeter hole in each of the washer fluid dispensers, and we're going to drill a 0.6 millimeter hole in the trunk lock and the side door locks. Once our holes are drilled, we'll use a chisel blade to shave off the raised detail and we'll sand everything flush. During the final assembly video at the end of the build, we'll replace all these details with some top studio rivets. Now we're going to take our chisels and carefully scrape away the Tamiya lettering on the roof, as well as take care of these raised ejector pin marks. If you don't have chisels, you can do this with sandpaper, but chisels make very quick work of this kind of raised lettering. Once we have all the lettering removed, we'll use some Tamiya sanding sponges and our sponge sander to smooth out the roof surface. Finally, before we put down any paint, we want to sand the whole body with some 1000 grit Tamiya sanding sponge. We don't need a lot of pressure or do a lot of sanding. We just want to take the shine off the plastic and give it a slightly rough surface for the primer to grip to. Once that's done, we'll wash everything in some warm water and Dawn dish liquid with a soft toothbrush to make sure we get all the sanding dust and debris off the body. If this were molded in white, or even in gray plastic, this paint job would be simple. We throw down some Mr. Surfacer white, then our white paint, do our stripes, and we'll be set to go. But no, Tamiya molded it in blue. So this paint job will get a little more complicated, starting with some Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. We'll do three light coats at 20 PSI, thinned about 60-40 Mr. Leveling Thinner to primer.
We don't want to hose it on, just nice, smooth, even coats. And here we are for coat number two. Again, we're just going to put a nice, smooth, even coat down. Now, originally I had these rear vent covers on a stick. But after the first coat of primer, I cut them off and cleaned off any sprue points and put them on an Altoid tin with some double-sided tape. This way we don't have any sprue points to deal with later. And the top is the only part that really needs perfect body color. And we'll wrap the primer up with coat number three. Next we're going to go with some Zero Paints Fine Silver Base. We'll put down two very light mist coats at about 20 PSI. The silver is going to do a couple of things for us. First, silver like black acts as a barrier coat from your plastic color bleeding through to the paint. I don't know the science behind it, it just seems to work. So say you're working on a Revell kit with some bright orange or red plastic or something and all you had was some gray primer. Two or three coats of silver should stop that red from coming up and showing up in your paint job. The main reason we're using silver though is that white has a very hard time building up coverage over black. I've seen it take up to nine coats sometimes to get smooth coverage that isn't blotchy or doesn't look gray. If you put a couple of coats of silver down, you can get good white coverage in the normal two to three coats. And some people feel silver gives white a little bit of a pop. I don't know how true that is, though. We've masked off the silver where the stripes will be, as I want to keep that silver as a base for the stripe color. Now we can spray some splash paints pure white. We're going to do about three light coats, staying about 20 PSI. Again, these are lacquer paints, so we want to spray super light coats. We're going to build it up. We're going to give it about 10 minutes between coats to gas off. We've given it 10 minutes and we're back for coat number two. And we're back for coat number three. We pretty much have coverage at this point. We just want to make sure everything is nice and even. Next up, we have some House of Color Snow White Pearl. This is going to give our white a beautiful silky sheen and a richness you don't get in plain white. I got this paint pre-mixed from Scale Finishes, and I'm really impressed with it. I've heard a lot of good things about scale finishes, and I'd really like to try some of their own color matched paints soon. Now this is an automotive grade lacquer. We're going to give it about two really light coats at about 20 PSI. And as usual, we want to leave about 10 minutes between coats to gas off. Something I haven't mentioned yet, I am waiting at least two hours between changing paint colors. We're putting down a lot of paint and we're doing a good deal of masking. 
We want to make sure our paints have plenty of time to gas off before we start putting tape on or moving on to another paint color. Speaking of moving on to our next color, we've reversed our masking and now we're going to spray the stripes with some Zero Paints Candy Red. Zero Paints can be quite hot and clear paints are normally hotter than regular paints as they typically have more thinner in them. So we want to build this up in extremely light coats and as usual definitely give it our 10 minutes to gas off between coats. Surprisingly enough it ended up taking 5 coats to build up good coverage on this red. You can see here on the first and second coats it's really more of a metallic pink. 10 minutes later we're putting down our second coat. Still not a whole lot of coverage here. Five coats of this could get kind of tedious, so after this, the remaining three coats are probably going to be at about four times normal speed. Another ten minutes, we're at coat number three, and we're starting to see some red here. Now, we're not looking at the tape. The tape is misleading. It's been picking up color since the beginning. We're really looking at that silver area down the center. Here we are back for coat number four, and we're really picking up our red now. And another 10 minutes for our fifth and final coat. And for this, we really just want to make sure all of our coverage is nice and even. We've got a smooth, even red all the way down the stripes. Okay, so it's the next day, and we're moving on to some bare metal foil. Sadly, most of the footage was trashed. We're going to start by rubbing down the foil with our finger. Then we're going to take a small Tamiya cotton bud to get it really worked down. A toothpick works well for burnishing this down as well. Once we have it burnished down, we're going to take our hobby knife with a brand new blade and very gently cut around the raised detail. I don't care if you've only used the last blade twice, get a new blade for this, it really is worth it. Notice when I'm cutting, I always have at least one finger from the cutting hand on the body. I find this really helps to stabilize my cutting hand, it helps me feel what I'm doing, and it keeps me from sliding off and cutting gashes in the paint. Once we finish cutting, we want to go back over it with the cotton bud. Sometimes cutting can lift or loosen the foil, and we want to make sure it's firmly down before we peel off the excess. If you do start to peel off the excess and your foil starts coming up with it, stop, burnish it back down, and very carefully recut the area. Now, peeling off the excess had a lifting effect as well, so once you get the excess off, go back over your foil detail and make sure everything is burnished back down nice and firm. I wanted some matching stripes on the sides, but I quickly realized I'd need to be making like half millimeter lines. I don't have any tape that small. I don't know if they make any tape that small. And I don't know how well trying to mask off and paint lines that small would work. So instead I made some red stripe decals on clear DIY decal sheet. And since the red ink is fairly transparent with the pearl underneath, they actually came out looking fairly close to the painted stripes. It's not a perfect match, but it is pretty close. Okay, we're about to use a heat gun to set the decals, but first I want to give a warning. A heat gun gets hot like a hairdryer, but produces far less wind. This makes them great for setting decals. However, I was asked a question and I stopped for just a few seconds forgetting I was holding a running heat gun and this was the result. I had to buy a whole new kit and start completely over. So be careful when using one of these and most importantly, don't stop in one place ever. After the first round with Microset, I followed up with some UMP Strong Decal Setting Solution, a little more heat and careful rubbing with the cotton bud and the stripes were nice and set.
Before we move to clear, I want to go ahead and put a wash in the panel lines. We're going to use some Tamiya Gray panel liner. Black is way too dark to use on white, yellow, or even most lighter pastel colors. It creates way too harsh of a line. The gray creates the illusion of shadow we're looking for without being way too overpowering. There aren't a lot of panel lines to do, just the two doors and the trunk or bonnet in the front, and it doesn't take much to fill them. Just touch the tip of the brush to the line and let the capillary action carry the wash along. Once it dries, go back with a cotton bud, moisten with some odorless mineral spirits, and it should clean right off. It's time for clear coat, and as usual, we'll be using Gravity Color Spain's 2K Clear. I really like how this clear lays down. Gravity's instructions say to use three parts clear to one part hardener and one part thinner. I like to add a little closer to about one and a half parts of thinner, for me, it seems to go down a little smoother and flow out better. Our first coat is going to be a nice light tack coat. We're not looking for absolute smoothness. We just want to spray out a nice light coat. We'll let that sit for a good 10 minutes or so to let it tack up. Then we'll follow up with our next coats. For our next two coats, we're going to slow down our passes and we're going to spray nice wet coats. We're trying to build up smoothness at this point. The smoother it goes down, the less work you have to do when it comes time to sanding and polishing. So again, nice smooth wet coat. Here we are again onto our third coat. And again, we want a nice, wet, shiny coat. We want to make sure we get any areas that might still have any hint of orange peel or roughness to them. At the end of this coat, everything should be perfectly smooth. Here's our finished body, and aside from melting the first one with the heat gun, I'm really happy with the results. There's a small bit of bleed that happened on the front trim where the masking tape didn't burnish down perfectly, but there's really nothing I can do to fix it. If I try to remask it and respray the white, I run the risk of changing the tone of the white in that area, which would look even worse. And I really don't feel it's worth stripping the whole body for that tiny issue. If I change some camera settings, you can see just how smooth this really is. You can see the individual LEDs in my desk lamp. The clear really is glass smooth, aside from a bit of dust here and there, which we can polish out with no issues at all. I'm not sure what it is between my camera and my light, but you can't see the details like this unless I turn the ISO way up or I really crank the aperture. My Samsung phone camera and the light just don't play well together sometimes. For anyone who tells you, you have to use the same brand of paint from primer to clear, just remember, we just sprayed Mr. Surfacer, Zero Paint Silver, Splash Paints White, House of Color White Pearl, Zero Paints Candy Red, and Gravity Colors 2K, all on the same body. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I am pretty darn happy with this. This came out exactly how I envisioned it. From here, I think we're going to move on to the engine, chassis, and suspension. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you on the next one. 
If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.